Yes, ma'am. Hi. So I'm getting to you very quickly because I know you're at work. Yes, ma'am. All right. So how are things going? It's going very good. I'm blessed right now. I uh, finally got uh, this other job that I've been wanting. I, it's my second week already. Okay. And so you're still doing your meetings and doing everything you need to do to stay clean and sober? Yes, ma'am. I've been doing three classes every week, uh, once a week, and then I just got to go for it with Ms. Galindo. All right. So what type of work do you do? Uh, metal work right now. I'm in a, in a, in a warehouse. We, we're cutting sheet metal and all that, uh, aluminum angles and all that for buildings. Okay. Well, here's the thing. Do not backslide because it's easy once you start meeting with people at work and they want to, you know, hey, let's just go out for a drink. Once you start yes, doing that, it's easy to backslide. So don't do that, okay? Yes, ma'am. And remember, if you need anything or you feel like probation is not addressing something with you, just uh, mm -hmm. let the court know. You understand? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I had a question. If you could help me out. Um, I got hired through a temp service, and they did a background check. I know I'm on deferred probation, but uh, this company that I'm at doesn't hire felons, but it, uh, the charge that I'm on still popped up. I don't know if there's like a letter they can get that. Say, stating that I'm still um, on, I'm on deferred probation, that I'm not a felon yet, a convicted felon? Well, what you'll have to do is you'll have to get an attorney to do that. But if you want them to call into the court, yes, I'd be more than been happy to tell them that you're on deferred adjudication. But that's all I will be able to tell them. I would yes, not be able to advocate for you. Okay, ma'am. Yeah, because uh, I think they hire you on like after three months. So after that, uh, I'll be getting in touch with you. Okay. All right. Keep up the good work. Do not backslide. Okay. I will not miss boy. I've been seeing you on TikTok a lot. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I don't even, and you know, it's so funny. I don't even know how to do TikTok, Instagram or any of that. I guess I need You're to learn. There, though. You're on there. I'll say what? <laughs> okay. All right. Have a great day okay. and uh, be safe at work. I know dealing with that. Sometimes accidents happen. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Because you know what a guy told me who was he's an attorney, but he mm -hmm. decided he didn't want to be an attorney anymore. He's a carpenter now. Yes, he lost one of his fingers. He said, you're not a carpenter until you lose at least one finger. So yes, don't be a carpenter. <laughs> Just work with cheap metal. OK, I won't. Man. Have a blessed day. Thank you. All right. You too. Have a blessed day. Bye bye. OK, on this case, what are we here for? Your Honor, um, Originally, we were going to do a compliance hearing um, back in, I believe it was December. We were opting to try to get his GPS monitor off. Mm -hmm. um, however, at this point, I don't think that that would be a good idea. Okay. Um, since December, there's been some mental health issues um, with Mr. Lemkin, and he's been in and out of treatment. Mm -hmm. um, so... We just wanted to give the court an update on where he was and um, have a couple of things that we want to we want to do. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. We were originally scheduled for yesterday. Uh, I did announce to the court that he was in the may pretenders to the court at Centennial Behavioral. He did get that discharge information, Judge. Mm -hmm. um, according to its outpatient plan, I believe they're wanting uh, coordination with Center for Healthcare Services. Um, to get him stabilized on potential med case management services, Judge. Mm -hmm. I spoke with probation, and that's something that uh, we're going to hopefully work towards just to linking him up with Center for Health Care, maybe some of these concerns, and hopefully he won't have to be going to uh, the Methodist or Behavioral Hospital on, on issues. But I'm, I'm glad the court brought this issue to light because it seems like he was having some issues, and I'm glad it's bring, being brought here so we can squash out and see what we need to do to get him some help. All right. Your Honor, I would like to point out that this, at this point in time, he is not being supervised by a mental health unit um, because he was in compliance with everything and we didn't know that there was an issue. Mm -hmm. So we would like to amend conditions for him to have an evaluation with our mental health unit. And as you know, they work hand in hand with the Center for Healthcare Services so that we can get him stabilized on his meds and um be supervised the way that he should be. We have no objection to that, Judge. Of the court. And I would also ask, Your Honor, if um, you can impose that that would happen as soon as possible.
All right, Mr. Lampkin, how are things going with you? Uh, good. All right. So here's the thing. Whenever there are some issues that occur with you, talk to your probation officer. If you feel like they're not addressing it, you can come into court. You understand? All right. Uh, Ms. Abrams, she's going to let you know how to contact your probation officer. But if there is a mental health <laughs> issue or if there's something you feel like that probation is not officer is not addressing, you can come into the courtroom. I'll give you my information too, so you can comment. And counsel, will you be able to stay on the case? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I don't mind staying on it just to assist him should any matters arise. And I'll give him and his family members here my contact info so they can always reach out to me too. All right. And so we'll make sure you remain appointed on the case. And you can, I know that usually in Judge Carruthers Court, they have updates ever so often. That's right. And the attorney who's appointed get paid for those updates. I believe usually the payment is paid as a motion to revoke. Uh, so, well, I'm with the public defender, so I don't have to, I didn't get paid the same. Okay, awesome. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> so, if we could, let's uh, recall this case and three months to see how he's doing. Yes, Your Honor. And at that time, if there are some issues that you have, you can let us know. But we'll bring you back in three months. And let me give you a date. Yes, Your Honor. Let's uh, put it for April 29th. Yes, Your Honor. Sounds, sounds like a plan. We surely appreciate the court's time and for addressing this matter, Judge, and you know, hope, we're hoping he gets better. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna amend conditions. Sure. I'll ask that the Mickey evaluation be expedited. We'll continue with the GPS, but once you're stabilized and everything is okay, your counsel can always come back for me to consider removal of the GPS. Uh, yes, he can come back, but I think it's probably best for him to just, in April, we can see how you're doing. And if everything is going well, I'll strongly consider removal of it. Do you understand? All right. Is there anything else that you want to discuss, Mr. Lampkin? All right, how are things going now? Are you living with relatives? And how's that going? I know one, so I kind of want to move back in on my own state. Well, you know what? And you can discuss that with your family members, but it's probably best that you say, stay with someone from now just until everything is back on routine. Uh, the family for Lampkin, have they already left? Hi, is there anything you needed to let the court know? Oh, come forward. Because it's going to take a team effort to make sure he does well on probation. I'm yes. ex-military, so we got it pretty much under control on that. Okay. I was wondering if we could get, uh, I know you already made a ruling on it. I was hoping uh, Malik would have made a uh, comment to you that we, if, if we could get a couple of hours extra on the monitor because we're having to take me to all these different uh, sure. uh, Can I see the box? and we make sure that he's, you know, charging it and everything. But we're just having a problem uh, with the hours of seven to six and we I want to really tell you that we're taking him to all these uh, doctor's appointments and we have a new psychiatrist appointment down on Commerce Street and we're kind of like everybody's running ragged right taking so if we could get a couple of extra hours. Okay. At eight o'clock. All fine. right. Why don't we do this? Uh, probation, are you okay with his GPS partial and for medical appointments and mental health treatments? So what that would mean is whatever time his medical appointment is or mental health treatment is, he can go and you can take him. So by me just saying partial GPS for medical appointments and mental health treatments, they will know. If there is an issue counsel with pretrial services or probation that's monitoring this, you can just let the court know. Yes. Okay. We're having to use all kinds of people to bury him around, you know? Okay. That's the main thing. All right. Thank you for letting me know that. Thank you. Zach? Yes, Judge. Uh, 
I want to tell you about this relationship I was in. Oh, okay. Let's hear it, Judge. <laughs> I was in this relationship with this guy. Loved him and everything, but we ended up separating. Okay. And the reason why we separated is because I was into my career. You know, I couldn't be a meteorologist, but, you know, I could try to protect people from different storms, right? Okay. So I'm trying to tell everybody this big storm is coming. Nobody was paying attention to me. But yeah. then I meet my ex again. Oh, wow. And I said, look, we need your help. Do you, can you help us? And guess what? We're chasing storms. And this right. big twister is coming. Oh. Got you. <laughs> I, we survived. You did. But Absolutely. my problem was, in the back of my mind, I always remembered the twister that happened with my family. Thank you for moving me out with the... Mm -hmm. What's the name? <laughs> and you know, my sister, a house fell on her. Is that right? <laughs> yes. And some girl comes by. We didn't even do probate. And guess what she does? I can't imagine. Some other lady comes up and tells her, oh, you can take her property. And she ends up taking my sister's red shoes. That was, wow, that is, we're like layers deep now, Joyce. Kind of <laughs> oh, yeah. from the chain now. <laughs> wow. You never seen Twisted. That's okay. Yeah. Ellen Hunt, which Bill Pack? Come on, Josh. Do we have any really seen? No, we have not. This, uh, can I watch your ticket? This is injustice, Judge. <laughs> no. Hello. Good morning, Judge. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm doing great, but I'll tell you what happened to me. Oh, uh, yes, please. Okay. I went to this small town, and I'm just, I'm just going to this small town to get something to eat. Okay. Next thing I know, they're trying to push me out of the town. Okay, all right. I... And they're trying to arrest me and they do arrest me and they throw me in jail. Judge, this was last night. So... And then I'm released, right? Okay. And I take off running and I'm in the woods and now they're coming after me. And guess what? They call in my supervisors and they're like, hey, you don't know who you're dealing with. And they're saying, what you call Hades, she calls home. And then I made it here. <laughs> Judge Rainbow, you know I mean Judge Boyd. Yes, and they gave me a nickname. <laughs> oh, that's great.